The Catechism of the Catholic Church Baltimore Catechism No. 3 Lesson 17 Honoring the Saints, Relics, and Images Number 214 Does the First Commandment forbid us to honor the saints in heaven? The First Commandment does not forbid us to honor the saints in heaven, provided we do not give them the honor that belongs to God alone. A saint, in the strict sense of the word, is a person who is declared officially by the church to be in heaven and who may be publicly venerated. The veneration paid to the saints in heaven differs essentially from the adoration of God. The saints are creatures and are not to be given the supreme worship due to the Creator alone. The supreme honor given to God only is adoration in the full and strict sense of the word. The veneration given to the Blessed Mother and to the saints is an act of respect and honor of an entirely different nature. The veneration given to the Blessed Mother of God surpasses that given to the saints and angels. Examples in Scripture, Exodus 23, verses 20-21, Joshua 5, verses 14-15, Ecclesiastes 44, verse 1, Matthew 4, verse 10, Luke 1, verse 48. Number 215. Why do we honor the saints in heaven? We honor the saints in heaven because they practiced great virtue when they were on earth, and because in honoring those who are the chosen friends of God, we honor God himself. Number 216. How can we honor the saints? We can honor the saints, first, by imitating their holy lives, second, by praying to them, third, by showing respect to their relics and images. Examples in Scripture, 4 Kings 13, verses 20 through 21, Job 42, verse 8, Acts 19, verses 11 through 12, Philippians 3, verse 17. Number 217. When we pray to the saints, what do we ask them to do? When we pray to the saints, we ask them to offer their prayers to God for us. Number 218. How do we know that the saints will pray for us? We know that the saints will pray for us because they are with God and have great love for us. Number 219. Why do we honor relics? We honor relics because they are the bodies of the saints or objects connected with the saints or with our Lord. The honor given to a relic does not stop at the sacred object itself but is directed to the person whose relic is venerated. Examples in Scripture, 4 Kings 13, verses 20 through 21, Acts 19, verses 11 through 12. Number 220. When does the first commandment forbid the making or the use of statues and pictures? The first commandment forbids the making or the use of statues and pictures only when they promote false worship. Examples in Scripture, Exodus 20, verses 4 through 5, Deuteronomy 4, verses 15 through 19. Number 221. Is it right to show respect to the statues and pictures of Christ and of the saints? It is right to show respect to the statues and pictures of Christ and of the saints, just as it is right to show respect to the images of those whom we honor or love on earth. Number 222. Do we honor Christ and the saints when we pray before the crucifix, relics, and the sacred images? We honor Christ and the saints when we pray before the crucifix, relics, and sacred images because we honor the persons they represent. We adore Christ and venerate the saints. Number 223. Do we pray to the crucifix or to the images and relics of the saints? We do not pray to the crucifix or to the images and relics of the saints, but to the persons they represent. In venerating relics, statues, and pictures of our Lord and the saints, we must not believe that any divine power resides in them, nor should we put our trust in them as though they had power of themselves to bestow favors, we placed our trust in God and the intercessory power of the saints. Important Truths About Honoring the Saints, Relics, and Images Devotion to the saints is one of the Catholic practices most misunderstood and opposed by non-Catholics. Yet it is a most reasonable devotion. If we truly love God, we shall love those who are dear to Him. And the saints in heaven are the souls most dear to God, united to Him for all eternity. Since they are so near to him, their prayers are most effective, so we ask them to pray for us. We can have a particular devotion to certain saints, whose condition in life was similar to our own, or who we believe will show a special interest in us. Thus, the members of a religious order whose founder is among the canonized saints will naturally have a special devotion to this saint. All Catholics should have a special devotion to the Queen of Saints, the Blessed Virgin Mary. In the liturgy of the Catholic Church, seven general classes of saints are distinguished. Apostles, martyrs, popes, confessors who were bishops, confessors who were not bishops, virgins, and women who were not virgins. Thus, everyone can find saints whose state in life was like his own. It should be noted here that when we speak of a saint as a confessor, we mean not that he heard confessions, 
but that he openly confessed himself a follower of Christ. Naturally, we cherish and venerate the images of the saints and their relics, just as the citizens of a nation respect and honor the images of the country's heroes and the articles they use in life. Catholics know full well that pictures and relics in themselves are only material things, incapable of helping us in our needs, but we find in them a means of inspiring us with pious affections, of reminding us of the saints, and of helping us to pray more devoutly. That is why every truly Catholic home bears holy pictures on the walls or sacred images among the furnishings. Only lukewarm, cowardly Catholics are afraid to have such representations in their homes out of fear lest their non-Catholic friends may laugh at them. Of all holy images, the most sacred is the representation of Christ's death on the cross, the crucifix. This should find a place in every Catholic home, especially in every bedroom, so that the occupants may say their morning and night prayers before this reminder of God's great love for us. The most venerated relic of the church is the cross on which our Savior died. The largest portion of this is kept in the Church of the Holy Cross in Rome, and small pieces are distributed to different churches throughout the world. Frequently, a bishop carries a relic of the true cross in the pectoral cross which he wears on his breast. The Church does not permit the public veneration of a relic unless it is properly encased and sealed, and its authenticity supported by a document signed by a bishop or other ecclesiastical dignitary. This does not mean necessarily that it is absolutely certain that the relic is genuine, but it means that reasonable care has been taken to establish the fact that the relic is a true one. There are three classes of relics. First class relics, which are the bodies or portions of the bodies of the saints. Second class relics, which are articles used by a saint, such as his clothing or books. Third class relics, which are articles that have touched a first or second class relic, such as the coffin in which a saint was buried. We honor the saints best by imitating their virtues. Every Catholic should be familiar with the lives of some of the saints, and especially of the saints whose names were given him or her in baptism. Sometimes, indeed, the saints performed extraordinary deeds or actions which were not in accord with ordinary prudence. In these things we must not try to imitate them, for on those occasions they were especially inspired by God. But we can all imitate the spirit that animated the saints, especially their love for God and for their fellow men. They were human beings like ourselves, subject to temptation. Some of them had sinned gravely before they became saints. We are all called to be saints, for to all of us our Lord said, You therefore are to be perfect, even as your heavenly Father is perfect, in Matthew 5, verse 48. Resolution. Resolve to choose certain saints, pray to them in particular, and try to imitate their lives. This was Lesson 17 from the Baltimore Catechism Number 3, Honoring the Saints, Relics, and Images. For more lessons, see the links in the description below. Any likes to this video and subscriptions to this channel are appreciated. Thank you for viewing. God bless. In nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen.